Really interesting. I, I, I'm curious to see the strategies that are going to be employed here by these teams compared to what we just saw with straight nissing. You see right there, neighbor taking nated sniper rifle. That's not a good sign if you're a Carbon fan. No, anytime neighbor's got the sniper rifle, you got to look out for big things to happen. Just a minute off the clock, we have the flag back in the hands of Ogre 1. Neighbor and Strong Side are going to be the two players in position to protect him. Neighbor looking for the new Carbon spawn. Doesn't see anyone finally spotting Captain Anarchy down low. Strong Side's going to pick up the kill. Ogre 1, though, so slow to move that flag. He was taking fire from a whole lot of positions there, and he could not move it very far. It's going to be stuck on the plat, and it looks like all Final Boss is really just going to try and reset up here. They're going to go for a big attack, and that's what Final Boss is known for. They go for the setup yeah. first, and then the big push. Which, which uh, it, it's a play style they've always kind of employed. It, it goes way back. It, it, they're a methodical team that will pick you apart. And, and the Halo 3 definitely supports that. You don't want to rush it too much. But one thing that Halo 3 does reward is group aggressiveness. If you're able to wait for your teammates to spawn and coordinate two or three players running together at a time, or maybe somebody watches your back and flanks, that's going to work out. And sometimes I think Final Boss's play style leaves them open to quick surging teams having success against them. All right, well, one team that is pretty quick surging, at least so far this tournament, it would be Carbon, like you said earlier, Sunnets. In that final, game five against Triggers Down. 45 of the 50 kills were assisted by another teammate. So this is the first time we've really seen amazing teamwork out of Carbon, and it seems to be paying off so far as they're staying right in this game with Final Boss. Now they got an overshield. nate has got the sniper rifle to work with, and they're going to be pushing in on the Final Boss setup. We're going to jump on board with a player that I love to hang out with and watch. This is actually Captain Anarchy. This is labeled Ghost Army. We're going to Shockwave, and Shockwave is actually back at his base with the sniper rifle. Oh! On his and he is getting a jumping headshot right now on Ogre 2. That, that's like Shockwave and Bold. I like seeing that. Oh, yeah. Chris Smith is back in the house, Sonny. This is Vegas. You know he never oh, plays poorly he's here. In Vegas. The last two years he's been here, I think he's won $100,000. 140 Maybe? Yeah, something ridiculously wow. large. A lot of zeros, crooked numbers, all that stuff. Well, there you see Gosiami getting taken down by Ogre 2. Shockwave cycling through all of his teammates' screens, trying to see what's going on. So, after about three minutes into the game, Shockwave trying to sneak up behind Strongside on the sword bridge. Final boss trying to push in. They got a sniper in the hands of Neighbor. He is actually on the carbon flat right now. And there's Neighbor on the green box. Wow. And Shockwave, the only member of Live Force team, he's on the final boss side of the map, so he's going to try and help out and stop this flag cap by coming back to support his teammates. You know, the thing that I don't want people to forget is that, or maybe they don't know, is that these two teams obviously have a lot of history, all right? There you is do not know that. Come on, have you been wait, following MLT? I know. All right, right, I'm, go I'm about to give a detail there. You, you little nervous Nelly there. You're jumping in and kind of cutting me <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? I don't like it so much, but I'm going to let you get away with it. I'm not even sorry. Because you're purdy. Not okay. even sorry. Anyway, right. last time these two teams played, Carbon took them to game five. It was a 3-2 to two for final boss in right. Dallas. Okay? So, Carbon... And honestly, they did not have a great event in Dallas. They played, they played fairly well, but they, they weren't clicking. They didn't look the way that they looked when they beat Triggers Down. That's for damn sure. So, Carbon knows they can hang with Final Boss. Now, Final Boss, on the other hand, is coming off an event where both Strong Side and Ogre One had their worst performances all season long. Strong Side was, Ogre One was actually negative 79, and Strong Side was negative 42. Now, Neighbor was the third most positive player at that event, at positive 56, so if they can balance that out a little bit, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a different result. But the question is, can they do that over an extended event? It's not just one series or two series. You've got to do it when, it when it really counts. And sometimes it seems like these guys, when they get challenged, they fall apart. And ex that may be because of execution. It may be because they're not, you know, they're not familiar with one another yet. But so far, what I see, especially last night, just the, how loose they've been and how kind of focused and over one especially kind of stepping it up, I, I think that we're going to see something different here this night. I don't know. I just have a feeling. All right. Well, you know, the Ogres, strong side, they have not been in a championship match since Meadowlands, the event that they won. But, you know, I think they're looking to change that here at the national championships. Right now, Captain Anarchy, he's got the overshield. He's sitting at the final boss base. Meanwhile, Ghost has got the final boss flag. It's moving on to the flat. Ogre 2, the last member to stop it. But Ghost oh, is going to put it in. Man. So that is the first flag cap scored by Carbon. And Sundance, are you surprised? 
I'm not going to say I'm surprised it's carbon. Every time I say that they're not going to do something, they do it. The thing that I do like, though, is that Shockwave did everything he could there to avoid the counter cap. Yeah, he did pick up one kill. Now it's going to be up to Nated. He's going to stop everyone else. It looks like Ogre one. And now they're in a great, in a great spawn for them, both spawning closer to the flag. That's going to be good because Nated was able to stay alive. Ooh, Shockwave. I like what I'm seeing so far. Shockwave definitely being aggressive. But playing it with, with some intelligence. I mean, he was he charging so much in previous events that, and just getting into battles on his own that he just couldn't win. Now, the kid's skilled, and I know that he was frustrated by it, but I, I just see something different in him so far at this event. Yeah, you know, when we started this season, Shockwave, he seemed to be a bit too stubborn, while the rest of the players, they quickly adapt to the, the way Halo 3 is played. You know, you play as a group, you play as a team, you push by yourself. Shockwave, he was used to the days in Halo 2 where he could just really run on his own and just dominate a team single-handedly with his glitches like the BXR and right, really just right. a solid double shot. But in Halo 3, oh, you can't do anarchy. that anymore. Oh, that was disgusting. <laughs> anyway, Sorry. Shockwave's good now, and so is his teammate. It's Captain Anarchy. He's got the Cyber Rebel, just picked up a headshot, but he, now he's getting double teamed, and Ogre 1 is going to be able to take him down. I tell you what, the... I know, dude. I'm at is there anybody the else energy so far from these teams. You, you, you look at Carbon right there. There doesn't seem to be any stress. No. You know, and all season when I've been looking at them, they've been, they've been kind of pinched up. I'm looking like, uh, you know, I'm not really having fun. Uh, I like uh, that voice. I like hey. that voice. But, but, oh, over one. Oh. I like that, though. Not backing down. Meanwhile, That's a good play. Meanwhile, Shockwave's got the flags out. So, neighbor versus Shockwave right now. Oh, look at this. Look yeah. at this. Shockwave turn. We got strong Wins the battle. Through, but then he four shot strong side. And I'll he's still what. taking fire, but check this out. And Meanwhile, Ogre 2 has a flag of his own, and he's got plenty of support. So this is a counter cap. Shockwave maybe pulling that flag on his own. Thought he could do a little bit more than he could without any support. And Final Boss is going to make him pay for it. It's all tied up now. One to one. 22 minutes left on the clock. Of course, we go to 15 minutes, and then after that, it is going to become sudden death I, I, I will be surprised if this does not wind up being a sudden death game. Just because... That's the history of these teams. These teams always give us amazing matches. They, they just have such amazing history with each other. Um, and, and you know, it's great to see again. And this is kind of a throwback match, and I'm, I'm happy to see it. Not saying that I'm, I was happy to see Triggers now get knocked down a lower bracket.